Let's put your hands together. Good. Put your hands together. It's a concert. I don't know. Um, but I, I'm loving this one. Take the stage, take up space, and take the wind. Christina, take it away. All right. Hi, I'm Christina Liu. Is the microphone picking up my voice? It is. Great. So, once again, my name is Christina Liu. And, uh, well, who am I? I am a senior security engineer at Cisco Meraki. I am a certified information privacy technologist. I am also a fellow at the San Francisco chapter of Oxlaw. We are a community of storytellers where we tell stories from the odd corners of history, science, art, and adventure, so everything that's not technology. Do you have any pop tart stories? <laughs> I don't have any pop tart uh, stories. But I do have stories about mutinies and um, like horse diapers. Oh, so, yeah. <laughs> so I want to start today with a visualization exercise with everyone. So if you want to, close your eyes. If not, keep staring at me. <laughs> so breathe in. Breathe <laughs> out. I want you to envision yourself speaking on a stage or in a giant room very much like this one. And you are absolutely crushing your talk. After your talk, folks, attendees, and your peers will ultimately want to come up and talk to you, which broke your professional networks because you all exchange LinkedIn's. Now, sometime in your future, while you're doing um, a job search or things like that, the hiring manager will see your resume and that you've put that you've been doing conference talks on this resume. And if the hiring manager doesn't know who you are, they will absolutely Google you. And when they do, they will see your name pop up, your talk, your topic, and potentially who you do. And when that happens, <laughs> and when that happens, a great first impression of you gets solidified and created. Now, if you are not looking for a new job, you're looking for a promotion, or let's face it, get more money. <laughs> and when promotion season comes around, and if you've been telling people at work that you've been doing conference talks and you've been doing presentations at work, your managers and your senior leaders should absolutely be impressed with your passion for the subject and your expertise. So, generally, People that speak on stage or in front of a crowd are perceived to have expertise over the topic they're talking about. Um, we are loud. I am, I am the loudest person in this room. I have control over these slides and I am the center of attention. And because of this, we are generally perceived to be fearless and pretty gutsy because 75% of people have a fear of public speaking. I'm sure many of us here can relate to this statistic. And in a 2022-2021 Chapman survey of American fears, more people are afraid of public speaking than they are of being murdered by a stranger. <laughs> so, today, here, we are going to be and we're going to channel our feisty inner warrior and ask, what do we say to the god of death? And if we know this, not today! So today, we are going to be embracing the power of public speaking. Public speaking is a craft that can be honed and developed. This is a great brand brand building tool, since this is a very specialized skill, which projects confidence and allows you to share your expertise with the world. And not only is this a great skill for the stage, this is transferable to other parts of your life as well. So, to be able to stand up in front of a crowd means that you are an effective communicator. So also, to be able to skillfully deliver that roast or toast, depending on how much you like this person, at uh, social functions like weddings, will win you fights amongst your friends and your family. And 
Great communication and effective communication is important to lead teams because no one will follow a leader if they cannot communicate. Also, presenting, especially at work, to leadership will give you that edge for promotions and those raises. That's how it works. Specifically, speaking at conferences will help improve our industry in key ways. The very first, diversity. We need fresh perspectives. We know it, we feel it, we see it, and we absolutely feel it. Um, by being visible and by being that voice of authority, you are serving as a beacon of hope to those that are coming into this industry and for those that want to stay in this industry. Knowledge sharing is the next one because cybersecurity threats are constantly evolving. And it may be specifically because of your life experiences, you can see attack paths and you can see improvements to the system that nobody else can. And also, if you are pivoting from a previous industry, this gives you an advantage because you have in-depth, intimate knowledge from another industry. So you're actually going to be making two industries better if you choose to stand up and speak. So to use myself as an example, I used to be a circus aerialist. So I, in fact, have run away to join the circus. <laughs> so the apparatus that I specialized on is called aerial silks. If you've ever seen them, they're like the red fabrics that hang from the ceiling to the floor. There's usually a performer in there that's doing like flips and drops. So, from what I learned in that was that the easiest trick in my repertoire was the one that netted the loudest applause. It wasn't the hard trick, it wasn't the technical one, it was the easy one that got me the win. So I quickly saw this parallel in InfoSec in terms of how data breaches and um, hacks had happened. What I quickly saw was that it was usually the simplest initial attack vector that netted that breach. So usually it's like social engineering, some sort of phishing, or lack of anything. It's kind of how that one goes. So because I so viscerally knew from my circus experience that it's the simple thing that gave you the big reward a lot of the time. Also my circus skills transfer, transfer pretty easily into the development of my public speaking skills. So, you are not an expert at everything, and that's okay, because you are absolutely an expert at something. So, for example, for myself, I personally don't know that much about hardware security, but I absolutely know enough about privacy and public speaking to be speaking about it. So, again, while you are not an expert at everything, you are absolutely an expert at something and absolutely teaching. And if you're worried about covering topics that other people have covered, it's okay. People have the attention spans of goldfish. So it's okay to, to talk about other subjects that other people are talking about. Especially since it really is your perspective, how you tell it and who you are is what makes that content engaging. It could really be the fact that you are using pastel watercolor slides is the reason why someone is finally paying attention to a topic when for years they've ignored it. To stress again, public speaking is a skill and a craft that can be honed like a knife. So, here are seven takeaways for success. This is literally, literally stuff that I do, so please, Right? The first one is practice, practice, practice. It should feel basically like a monologue by the time you're up here. You're going to feel confident if you know exactly what you're going to say next, and you're not going to trip up over your words. Also, while you're practicing, record yourself on a um, photo booth or any other app like that. What this will achieve is that you can see any public speaking habits that you might want to change. So if you notice that you're using a lot of filler words, like um, uh, uh, those words happen generally because your brain is trying to come up with the next word for what you're trying to say. So if you're noticing that stuff, 
you can try to fix that in the beginning. Also, uh, this will help you because it will make you not so reliant on your notes, so you're not reading off your speaker's notes. Number two, don't go over your time slot. Uh, use the timer that's in the apps, and this is really because it's the issue of respect. Also, this is going to be super challenging because you have so much wonderful information to share that it can be hard to cut content. But you've got to cut that content and cut it down to the basics to where you're just able to communicate that idea out to people. And the reason why we need to do this is, again, is a respect thing. It's a respect for your audience's time, the next speaker's time, and the venue's time. Three, limit your words on slides, because pictures are even better. Your audience will not read a slide with a ton of words. I personally go into a fugue state if I see a slide with a bunch of words. Your audience isn't here to read slides. They're here to listen to you and how you are telling your story. Um, if you need a, a more complete outline, you can create one and publish it at the end or at the end of the conference for people to like take home or read at home. Four, know your audience. Do your best to understand your audience so that you can tailor your content and delivery to them. So for example, if you are giving a security talk to web developers, you may have to define acronyms and jargon to them because they may not know what OWASP is, RBAC is, SSO, MFA, like these terms we know, but other people, they don't. So, yeah, so for example, in a remote security professionals, we don't have to define that, and we can even do deeper dives into that content in a room of people that already know the subject. Five, speak with confidence, and take your breath when you need it, because mistakes are going to happen. This is live entertainment. Mistakes are going to happen, and that is okay. No one will know you messed up unless you show that you messed up. And if you feel like you're getting tongue-tied or overwhelmed or frantic, just, just pause. Slow down. Take a breath. Because the words that follow a long breath always sound poignant as heck. Six, be brave and apply to those call for papers. It's absolutely okay to apply to more than one conference at a time. And also, while this one doesn't feel great, rejections. Rejections are going to happen, and that's okay. Don't take them personally because, well, the reason why you may have been rejected is because sometimes the conference just ha doesn't have enough slots for the amount of speakers it has. Also, if you do get a rejection, you can absolutely ask for feedback so that you can improve your CMP outline for the next conference. Seven, ask for help because people in your community want to see you succeed. Ask your friends, ask your coworkers, ask your mentors, and the things you can talk to them about is ask them to review a CMP outline. Does this make sense? Um, I don't can't take that one for me. <laughs> and also, if you if you have like writer's block, you can absolutely brainstorm with other people, ask them to help you with content. Also, ask for constructive criticism on your technique. And public speaking is a skill done in front of people and with people. So this skill is very hard to improve if you're doing it in a vacuum. And if you find that you don't have a community or mentors or anything like that, reach out to me! I'll, I'll do my best to help you. At Cluthulu on Twitter or find me on LinkedIn. So I want you to take these tips and give them a go. Because I believe that everyone here can absolutely do this. You can absolutely take this stage, make your voice heard, and have victory over your own goals and fears. So I look forward to seeing every one of you here and in the future sometime also presenting. Um, once again, my name is Christina Lou. I want to say 
Big thanks to Diane Initiative. Big thanks to Kat. Big thanks to the volunteers and everyone here. I believe I have time for questions. Ooh.